like to call to order the West Pine Village Board meeting of November 3rd, 2022 to order at 6 o'clock p.m. and ask Clerk Simsky for a roll call, please. Mayor Gunter. Here. The clerk's here. Trustee Barker. Here. Trustee Brady. Here. Trustee Guzzo. Here. Trustee Little. Here. Trustee Nero is absent tonight. Trustee Simonovich. Here. Attorney Zimanek. Here. Village Manager May. I'm here. Good. Here. We're glad. <laughs> and Assistant Village Manager Parker. Here. Would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. Um, at this point, we have open forum. If there's anybody here from the public that'd like to talk about something that's not on the agenda, now's the time. Uh, seeing none, I'll close open forum and move on to reports. Uh, my report is first, and uh, Veterans Day ceremony next Friday, November 11, 11, 11 at 11 o'clock. Uh, it'll be a new location. It's gonna be at Veterans Memorial Park, which is at 75 East Richmond. They designed a beautiful new memorial. Um, and this is the first time Veterans Day has moved there. It's usually at Ty Warner, but I think because it's, it's got an indoor facility available, if it rains, uh, it's a good location to switch to. And I know that the American Legion is running this along with the Park District and um, Frank Trout is kind of the spearheading this for the American Legion. The um, KAP7 Champions Cup. The National Champions Cup is a three-day event, November the 4th through the 6th at the FMC Natatorium with the best youth water polo players going for gold in the girls and boys <clears throat> divisions. We're anticipating 24 teams and 480 athletes. Um, and again, we want to give them a big welcome and these athletes with their parents are going to be staying at um, hotels not only in Westmont but surrounding area and be eating so this is uh, another indication of how um, the natatorians bring in visitors to Westmont and this is um, I'm gonna ask Larry Forsberg to please come up and this is an exciting anniversary celebration uh, to one of our businesses that I think everyone here knows this is a really fun part of my job. Good evening, everyone. Um, on Thursday, November 17th, we are going to be celebrating a 25th anniversary for one of the best known, most successful, most enjoyed restaurants in all of the West Bend, in all of the DuPage area. Yes, I'm talking about Uncle Bub's restaurant, 25 years of service to the community. I'd like to invite up both Mark Link and Jay Rushford from Uncle Bub's to talk a little bit about what they have planned for that day, because there's a whole day of some really special activities. And <coughs> I'll talk to you guys. Good evening, how are you? So yeah, it's been 25 years. We're grateful for the 25 years and we're grateful to be part of Westmont. We can't thank you enough for be, being so accommodating for those 25 years. Um, I never thought in 25 years I'd be up here talking <laughs> since it's our 25th anniversary. Uh, a lot of that credit goes to Jay and our entire team. Um, gosh, we started out pretty, not doing too much in, we did a lot, and we've done a lot, and we want to thank not only you all, but the residents of Westmont for your business and, and for patronizing an independent restaurant and all the independent restaurants here in Westmont. We thank you for all that. Uh, we got some things planned for our anniversary. We are going to have some spotlights out there. We're gonna have a red carpet with some stanchions out there, and Jay, you know what else we're doing. We're gonna be doing some specials that day, so uh, many of you have probably already had our pulled pork sandwich. That day we're gonna be offering it for $3.25. 
Um, we're going to be doing half price bottles of barbecue sauce. Um, we're going to be just kind of giving out surprises throughout the day, and we're going to also be offering our award-winning ribs in December. We don't have a date for that yet, but we're going to keep on celebrating. Uh, we're so grateful to everybody for 25 years. I still don't believe that it's 25 years. I keep doing the math. Fast, I don't change? feel like I've done 25 <laughs> years. It doesn't seem right. <laughs> My back feels it. No. Yeah. So, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I, I appreciate the, you know, honoring the accomplishment, but to be honest, we couldn't have done it without everybody. Mm -hmm. It takes a community. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. We're grateful. So but again, thank you, you, all you very could thank the entire community, but we thank you for your product. Yeah. And I that's know. why that speaks I, for itself. I remember back when Village Hall was in a, in a tr mobile or a trailer? Was it in a, a, some it was type of a trailer? little house yeah. right here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it was. Uh, God rest his soul, Mayor Addington, Jim Addington. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, I'll, well, you help us, and I will be part of the community. <laughs> and, and, you have. and I tried to keep that. We keep that, uh, our morals and our, yeah. you know, we keep that. We continue to give back, and that's part of being part of the community. And, and I thank you for that. You've always been there for sponsorships. You're there to assist every event. And I know you were at the Halloween as it burns uh, Bankston's pumpkin. Bankston's, yes. and that's usually a we very. Just finished popular. that up. Uh, yeah. The tent just came down yeah. yesterday, yeah. so it's been a lot of a lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot of work, but that's. Congratulations! Twenty-five Thank you. years is Thank a great so accomplishment. Much. Thank you. So, just again, a quick reminder: that's Thursday, November seventeenth. The deals are going all day long, so come in throughout the day. But the ribbon cutting will be at three o'clock sharp. How Thank many you. pulled pork can I have? Can I buy them? Uh, limit five. Uh, I knew there was a limit, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's all I have. I'll turn to Clerk Simsky. Um, I really don't have, well, I can add to his talking tonight about Uncle Bubs because I took my two granddaughters and my daughter there for dinner last night, and those granddaughters loved it. They were having a ball. They ate every bite, so, and they're picky, so <laughs> they liked the food a lot. All right, well, thank you. And I'll turn to uh, Trustee Brady, Community Development Committee. You know, at the, uh, earlier this evening, we had a Community Development Committee meeting, we received an update on a variety of activities for the village, including a project to evaluate and update incentives in the downtown area. A project is also uh, projected to uh, update the outdated village, village uh, zoning ordinances, uh, the, opti uh, the option of the uh, more current model building codes uh, will be discussed in the very near future, and are steps being taken to accept building permit applications online. The uh, Community Development Committee also received updates on the ongoing planning for the proposed residential development at the Hilton site on the north side of the village. Our staff expects the application to be received sometime in early 2023 for village consideration. That's all I've missed, Mayor. Well, thank you. Trustee Johanna Guzzo, Fire Public Safety Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to remind everyone that our next Fire Public <clears throat> Safety Committee meeting is December, 4, December 1st here, 4.30 at the Village Hall. Everyone is welcome to attend. Uh, Sunday morning, 2 a.m., we fall back. So I want to remind everyone, change clocks, change those batteries in the smoke detectors. And then there is also a new law which is going effect in January 1st. So I want to, Fire Prevention Director Neil Berkowitz is here to tell us a little bit about the new law. Thank you, Trustee. Uh, so as you heard, there's a new smoke alarm law that's coming to effect in Illinois. This is, uh, smoke detector laws are not new. Uh, requirement in Illinois since 1988, the Illinois Smart Alarm Detector Act has required all dwelling units to have smoke detectors. Uh, the new requirement just updates the law to reflect changes in new technology. It's aimed at saving lives while making it easier and more cost effective for Illinois residents uh, to comply. Uh, nothing is more heartbreaking than <coughs> responding to a, a fatal fire and find non working smoke detectors in a home. The National Fire Protection Association reported in 2021 that nearly three out of five home fire deaths occurred in homes with no alarms or alarms that failed to go off. The death rate in home structure fires was 55% lower in homes with working alarms. In Illinois, there were 97 deaths in 2021 from non-working smoke alarms, and nearly 70% of those deaths in homes without working smoke alarms. 
Uh, obviously, the number of deaths that we have in fires has decreased from the past. Uh, you're more likely to die in a residential fire now than you were years ago, and this is mainly due to the uh, products that we use in our furniture nowadays being synthetic and producing gases and thicker smoke and burning hotter. Uh, nowadays, you have three minutes to get out of your home when it catches fire, where 30 years ago, you may have up to 30 minutes to get out of the home. So it's very important to have the working smoke alarm for that early detection. Um, obviously, this, uh, not, we're not stating that, or the new, the recent revisions don't require residents to go out and install new alarms uh, starting January 1 and throw the old ones out at that time. Um, the new smoke alarms uh, come to effect that when you have one in your home that is, no, that is outdated, past its 10-year life expectancy, or no longer reacting appropriately, that new one that you install needs to be a 10-year sealed lithium-ion battery detector. Um, unless you have hardwired smoke alarms, then those can still have that battery backup. Um, but you are able to get the hardware alarms that do have sealed lithium-ion batteries. Um, this also does not t uh, supersede the newer Wi-Fi alarms and radio signal alarms from Nest and the home security system of that nature. Those are still good to have because they have monitored uh, battery, battery life. So this is just going to help make sure that these residents, when their smoke alarm goes bad, they don't take take it down and take the battery out and not replace it. It's gonna make sure that in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning, you're not hearing that low battery signal waking you up, making you climb on the ladder to replace that battery every six months. This alarm will stay good for the life of the detector, which is 10 years. Um, the new detectors do cost a little bit more money up front, but they will save residents 40 to $60 over the actual uh, lifetime of the detector. Uh, so I just want to remind everyone in closing that smoke detectors should be installed on every level of the home. Uh, you should also try to have them in your bedrooms if you're able to. Uh, smoke detectors should be mounted four to six inches from the wall to the ceiling. That's where the smoke is going to co collect. Inverse fluid dynamics, we all know smoke is going to the ceiling. And also make sure you have a working carbon monoxide detector within 15 feet of all sleeping spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. And Trustee Simonovich, Pub Police Public Safety Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we won't have a Police Public Safety Committee meeting until uh, next year, 2023. Um, last Saturday, we had our drug take back day on October 29th. Um, and I am very happy to report that we recovered 315 pounds of drugs that were turned in. So a very successful event to safely dispose of those drugs. Um, and finally, um, just want to remember, remind everybody to get out and vote in advance of Election Day. The library remains a early voting uh, polling place through Election Day, 7 p.m. on weekdays, 5 p.m. this weekend. Thank you. Well, thank you. Trustee Nero's out of town on business. He's the Public Works Committee. Uh, I'll give his report. The next meeting is December the 15th at 4.30 right here. Uh, there is a new holidays tree. Um, we want to thank Public Works for coordinating the planning of the new Westmont Holidays tree, which was completed on Tuesday. This will be the new tree that will be used for our annual Holidays tree lighting ceremony, ceremony, which will be December 3rd after the Holidays parade. Is that in Addington Plaza? Correct. It's It's been put back in its original spot at Addington Plaza. Um, there is a free leaf collection. Uh, I'm not going to say during the whole month of November because I had <laughs> trouble with that before. <laughs> it's till November 26th, but you, residents put uh, all the leaves you want out in recyclable bags and they'll pick them up. Uh, that's something that is uh, uh, unique in that you don't need a sticker. Put them out during your normal uh, pickup day. Um, and again, we want to welcome our new Public Works Director, Amy Reese. She will be starting soon and we're looking forward to working with her. And we'll give her an opportunity to come to the podium and unless you want her now. Uh, another night. No, well, that's a night. All right, <laughs> and that's what Trustee Nero would have had. Trustee Little, Administration and Finance. Thank you, Mayor. The next Administration Finance Committee meeting will be held November 17th at 4.30 right here in Village Hall. This month, we're looking forward to welcoming two, mem two new employees to the Public Works Department, obviously the director, Amy Reese, and street maintenance worker, grounds, Jesse Rapp.
community events. I have a lot to talk about. Um, we had the Wicked West Fest. <clears throat> All of our community Halloween and Wicked West Fest events went extremely well. We had the trick or treat trail, the casket races. The, we, where did I lose my place? Okay, um, on the 22nd of October, there were a number of events downtown. The Westmont Chamber had their trick or treat trail and the casket races. Westmont Special Events hosted the costume contest and the photo booth. <coughs> Manning School had their Monster Mash Dash. Holy Trinity co coordinated their Trunk or Treat event. And the Westmont Environmental Improvement Committee held their Pumpkin Smashing event. The weather was great and we had an all-time attendance record of approximately 2,000 people. I know I handed out 1,500 pieces of candy, so it was a busy day. Also on October 22nd, the Park District received rave reviews for their Haunted Forest event at Diane Main Park and Smith Woods. The contest results are in the results from the Scarecrow Contest, Home Decorating Contest, Costume Contest, and Casket Races have all been posted on the Village website at westmont.illinois.gov. Westmont Just to let you know, the Public Works once again took top honors in the Casket Races and the pumpkin, pumpkin smashing superstar was T.J. Riley of the Public Works. And that's all I have, Mayor, thank you. And I understand approximately 80 businesses participated in giving out candy during the Trick or Treat Trail. So I wanna thank all those businesses. It was a great day. Um, and last, Trustee Barker, Environmental Improvement Committee and Westmont First Chair. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, the Environmental Improvement Committee will meet again on uh, Monday, November 7th at 5.30 in Village Hall. And on Saturday, November 5th, we have the pumpkin composting in coordinating with uh, the county. And uh, that's from 9 to noon at the uh, library parking lot. And you bring your pumpkins uh, to be composted. They must be free of uh, inorganic materials, candles, and decorations. And then we'll have, uh, we have some uh, marker school uh, science club students out there helping us. And uh, we've done very well over the years. We also have the holiday lights recycling again this year. Um, that will be at the library parking lot and the South Fire Station. And the details are posted on the village website. And then new, um, <coughs> We've been trying to get this out, and thanks to Mr. McIntyre's help, we were able to get a green business and residential recycling contest going. <clears throat> and uh, information is online to sign up, and we encourage everyone to share their recycling practices and encourage people to promote and do better um, in their uh, recycling. And then finally, Westmont First, our next meeting date is November 21st at 5.30. And again, we're still working, um, finalizing that mural program. And then we are talking about busking. Um, that is all I... Well, thank you. And I'm going to, Clerk Simsky, uh, has some additional items. I do. Um, village offices will be closed November 11th. Recycle and garbage pickup will not be affected. And of course, that's Veterans Day. So that's why we're closed. Thanksgiving closures, um, village offices will be closed November 24th and 25th. Recycle and garbage pickup will be picked up on the 26th and 27th. And I'm like Trustee Savanovich, um, encouraging everyone to get out and vote. The library is a polling place on election day next Tuesday, located at 428 North Cass. It's your responsibility to vote and don't complain to anybody if you don't do it. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, next on the agenda, items removed from the consent agenda. I ask that the proclamation for Dementia Friendly Awareness Day be removed and addressed separately. Does any other board member see anything they'd like? If not, then I'd ask Manager May to read the consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, the consent agenda this evening starts with village board meeting minutes. Board to consider a motion approving the minutes of the village board meeting held on October 20, 2022. That's followed by finance ordinance number 14 in the amount of $1,162,038.44. We have several purchase orders. 
First purchase order is DuPage Convention Visitors Bureau, $35,599. This represents the uh, municipal contribution for our fiscal year ending 23. Um, or I, they might be on a calendar year, I don't know. Second purchase order, Baxter and Woodman Incorporated, $40,000. This is for general <coughs> GIS consulting services. Next purchase order, Vizu Sewer of Illinois, $29,779 for a certain storm sewer lining, cure in place uh, pipe. Vixen Construction Incorporated, $188,764.45. This is the purchase order uh, accompanying the agreement you already approved <coughs> for the gateway sign at Cass Avenue and 67th Street. Next is Morton Salt Incorporated, $60,704. This is for our annual um, road salt purchase, but with DuPage County. We also have a state of Illinois uh, contract as well. Winkler Services, LLC, $69,941. The Cyclic Parkway Tree Pruning, also an agreement you approved last time. Those purchase orders total $424,000. $787.45 brings the total of the purchase orders together with finance ordinance number 14 to $1,586,825.89. Next we have uh, community events, uh, Westmont 20, the Westmont Holidays 2022. <laughs> Board to consider an ordinance approving the following requests from the Westmont Holidays Committee for the 2022 Westmont Holidays opening ceremony on December 3rd, 2022. Permanent amplified sound in the downtown business district near Westmont Center from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Closed Cass Avenue from Naperville Road to Richmond from 4.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. for the Holidays Parade. Closed West Quincy Street from Cass Avenue to Adams from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. for the Holidays Parade and close Linden from Burlington to Chicago Avenue for the parade staging area, and that'd be between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, that is the final item on the consent agenda with the one removal. Do I have a motion to approve as read? Motion to approve as read, Little. Second, Guzzo. Motion remains second. Any comments from anybody? I have one comment on the parade. This is the first year I'm going to miss it, and I'm inviting all the trustees to ride out with Santa down the parade route. And, and with your young children or grandchildren, there's room for all the trustees to uh, bring Santa to town. So uh, please participate. I wanted to make sure everybody knew about that. Um, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Simonovich? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. And Trustee Nero is absent. All right. Motion passes. We're going to move back to the Proclamation Dementia Friendly Awareness Day. Board to consider a proclamation for Dementia Friendly Awareness Day. And before we read it, I'm going to ask um, Mary Ferguson, who was very instrumental, along with Sue Frick, of making Westmont the first community in DuPage County to be dementia friendly. And a lot of work went in. Mary, would you like to, you got somebody else with you? Yes, yes. Come on up and um, you can give us some additional information and then I'll ask Manager May to read the proclamation. Great. So good evening. Um, I'm Mary Ferguson. So we've been working on dementia friendly for almost three years. In March, it'll be three years. The state of Illinois, actually this month, is now five years it's been a dementia friendly state. So that's been great. And as you all know that I can sit here and talk about dementia friendly and I'm always willing to do that. But we do have a couple guests tonight that I think with this proclamation, the reason we've done this, I think it's nice to see the, to bear fruit. We've been doing this, like I said, for almost three years. Um, so I do have a couple guests. I have Carmen Higgins from the Westmont Library and then we have a Westmont resident, Vicki Martinez, who also would like to say a few words. So I'm gonna hand it over to them. Hello and thank you for having us here this evening. Um, as a dementia-friendly library, we strive to provide easy access to a variety of resources and material on dementia. Um, we have served uh, to over 241 um, individuals uh, through our dementia programs and videos. 
We offer monthly programs on the first Wednesday of the month, uh, and they're all a variety of topics related to dementia. We also have um, YouTube videos that are available um, all year long. Um, they're called Together Time Creating Memorable Moments, and these uh, videos have tips and ideas on how to create fun and, on, and um, ide uh, activities to do with someone with dementia. We um, also recently officially established a um, dementia-friendly collection in the library. library. Um, this is located in the nonfiction area, and it's a collection of books, DVDs, and audiobooks related, again, on a variety of topics on dementia and also information for caregivers. Um, it's a, a collection that's going to be easy to browse, and it's accessible because it's in a central location, and we have great signage. So um, we are excited to be a part of this, and I just want to really give a shout out to Mary, who's been so instrumental and has been wonderful to work with. And um, we are so happy to be a part of this and to continue to educate our community and bring awareness to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for having me here. And you, uh, and you are, I, state your name. So you oh, I'm sorry, I'm Vicki Martinez. Sorry. Um, I want to first of all thank Carmen and Mary for everything they do. I have gained so much knowledge going to the seminars. I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's about 18 months ago, and without them, I would have, I'd just kind of be floundering around not knowing whether my behaviors were normal or not. Um, I just discovered through them that there was so much to learn. They put together meetings that hold information for all of you to learn from and to explore on your own. Um, I've learned some warning signs of dementia, some important information about legal and financial planning for those of us with dementia. I've learned there is a time and place to question whether or not I should be driving, or how about the importance of adult daycare. I've also come away with different views on how and when hospice should become involved in your life and the lives of your family and or caregivers. And it's an important role the caregivers play. I wish more would come to these dementia-friendly meetings because they're, they're just so informative. To accept this diagnosis can be mentally and physically debilitating. Carmen, Mary, and all involved are so important to those of us. It is my opinion that these seminars offered are extremely valuable and are such an advantage to, excuse me, to all of us and should be a must do for all of us with dementia as well as their caregivers because dementia affects everyone and I'm especially thankful to Carmen and Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd, at this point, I'd ask Manager May to please read the proclamation so we can approve it. Dementia Friendly Awareness Day. Whereas since 1983, November has been designated as National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, and whereas more than 5 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, and whereas 16 million Americans provide unpaid care for people with Alzheimer's or other dementias, and whereas this degenerative brain disorder can strike adults at any age, and whereas there are over 230,000 Illinois residents over 65 living with Alzheimer's, 9.5% of residents over the age of 45 have subjective cognitive decline and 383,000 family caregivers bearing the burden of this disease. And whereas the Westmont Dementia Friendly Advisory Committee encourages the village residents, businesses, and services of Westmont to break the stigma and fear of exclusion attached to Alzheimer's disease and other dementia. And whereas through education and awareness, our Dementia Friendly Advisory Committee continues to build Westmont into a dementia friendly community that supports those living with dementia and their care partners to maintain an active role in our community. Therefore, Ronald J. Gunter, Mayor of the Village of Westmont, does hereby proclaim November 3rd, 2022 as Dementia Friendly Awareness Day in the Village of Westmont and call upon all citizens to continue to work toward becoming a dementia-friendly community, even with the challenges presented by the current pandemic. I have a motion to approve is read. Motion, motion, motion. Second, second, Barker. Motion made second. Any comments? 
Um, um, my the library's done a tremendous <coughs> job working with that advisory committee to provide those programs. And I want to thank you. Um, it's made our staff more aware as well as the, the community. Uh, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Simonovich? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Motion, um, the motion passes and I'd like to present this to you. Maybe take a um, yeah, let photograph. Me, let me put this down. Thank you. A temperature problem in the room tonight. I've noticed. <laughs> okay, there's no, no unfinished business. We'll move to new business uh, proposed aggregate tax levy. Or to consider a motion determining the proposed aggregate tax levy. Director Cunningham. Mr. Mayor Real Ward, um, tonight I'm going to talk to you about items A and B. Uh, the proposed aggregate tax levy for the village of Westmont and also the proposed aggregate tax levy for the Westmont Special Service Area 2. The administration finance committee initially discussed the proposed tax levy for 22 at the meeting on August 25th, 2022. On October 18th, uh, the Westmont Village Library approved a resolution approving the levy request of $2,202,878. The tax cap allows revenues to increase by CPI, which was set at 5% for 2022, plus new growth. The total proposed levy for both the village and the library combined is $10,014,832 which is an increase of $652,765, or 6.97%, compared to the 2021 extended levy. The village makes up $540,797 of that, which is 83%. The library makes up $111,968, which is 17% of the increase. The 5% CPI increase would apply to both new and existing properties and makes up $468,103 of the proposed increase. $184,662 of the proposed increase would apply to new construction. If there is no new growth, only the only increase to the levy would be the CPI. So going on to the special service area Green. two proposed tax levy, the village performs fire protection service for the area formerly served by the North Westmont Fire Protection District and receives compensation through a special service area. This year's proposed levy is $103,801, which is an increase of $8,371 or 8.77%. For the purposes of complying with the statutory requirement for the Truth and Taxation Act, we must compare the 2021 aggregate tax le extended levy to our 22 statutory permissible proposed levy. If the amount of the increase is 5% or greater, a public hearing must be held by the Village Board. The proposed increase is 6.97% when put together with the Village Library. Therefore, a public hearing is required. There will be two public hearings held on December 1st, 2022 for the Village of Westmont, which includes the library's levy and the special service area too. After the public hearings, the Village Board will act on both levies requested and the abatement of bonds on December 1st. And again, th this is an annual, annual, both of these are annual and especially with the CPI being so high, it, it, takes us over that threshold where we have to publicize it. That is correct. Um, 
but I do need two separate motions. Um, uh, a, the proposed aggregate ta tax levy. Do I have a motion to approve as presented? Motion to approve as presented. Little. Second, Guzzo. Most remain set comments, questions. You may see in the paper all the different borders that uh, a lot of other taxing districts are doing. Uh, that's a requirement. Again, CPI has always been low. This is keeping us up with the um, rising expenses. Uh, anybody seeing none? Roll call, please. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Motion passes. Now I need a motion for B, the proposed aggregate tax levy for this Westmont Special Service Area 2. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve Guzzo. Second, Little. Motion remain second. Any additional comments? Seeing no roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Motion passes. Um, new business C, a B1 permit my first debate, debate debut <laughs> photography at 110 South Cass Avenue. Board to consider an ordinance approving a B1 development permit for my first debut, LLC, to mm -hmm. operate a photography studio at 110 South Cass Avenue. And I got Director Sylvester to give us some additional information. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Trustees, the request, as the Mayor just summarized, is for a B1 permit at uh, 110 South Cass Avenue for a business called My First Debut Photography Studio. Uh, the business owner and the applicant, Brittany Mira, is here, and she's uh, going to give a brief presentation as soon as I can get the PowerPoint set up. You want to freewheel it until I get this sure. going? Hi, everybody. My name is Brittany Mira. I'm a photographer specializing in newborn photography. Um, I've been doing photography since 2014. Um, I lived in Pennsylvania, and I recently just moved to Illinois, <coughs> um, so I needed a space to work um, with my newborns. Um, 110 CAS is spacious, um, and it would be perfect for me to set up my sets and have my workflow um, done perfectly and quickly so they can get the babies in and out. Um, so I decided to open up a studio called My First Debut. Um, and I put together a little presentation. It's just not working. It's not working. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So as I've mentioned, my first debut is a photography studio um, specializing in newborns. Um, I had mentioned that I have been doing it since 2014. Um, I will be the owner operator of the establishment. Um, once business allows and I need to add on more um, photographers, I will do so. Um, but at this time, it would just be me. Um, 110 Cass is about 1,300 square foot. Um, so I can, like I said set up a bunch of different sets um, so I can move quickly. <coughs> um, the hours would be between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday through Saturday, by appointment only. Um, and then here is a few of my <coughs> examples of work that I have done in the past. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. You're right there by Uncle Bob's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got people coming and going all the time. <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the B1 permit? Motion to approve, Little. Second. Motion to be made and second. Comments? Any? I have a comment. Yes. I see on one of the pages here that you got proposed business signage. And one is really interesting. It's a, a hanging shaft type. You know, being on the board only for a year, didn't this come up in the future? Do we have an ordinance where we can have a, a hanging sign in front of the building? Director Sylvester is, jumped Is that up. permissible? I mean, I think it's a great idea. So we do have different rules for signs. Uh, I haven't seen this specific one you're referring to, but we do allow blade signs or signs that project vertically away from the front of a building. Uh, if this meets the size and the height requirements, we'd allow it. Um, hopefully, you've been told you'll need to apply for a sign permit. So when she applies for the sign permit, we'll review it and make sure it meets all the requirements. I think it makes it very personable, all the businesses. I mean, it, it, other towns have done this. I think it looks great. 
Well, a final thought is I believe since the village adopted the new sign rules about five or six years ago, where we started to allow those, we call them blade signs, uh, we've encouraged them, we've done a mild amount of promotions of those, um, but I don't think there are many businesses that have taken advantage of the allowance to have that type of sign. Uh, so I think it's great that, that this might be a business that does. Right, there has to be some, Sorry. Has to be some standard because some could put it up a little hooks or whatever and it could be too low. So, right. But I think it's a great idea, very personable. Thank you. Trustee Simonovich? Yeah, excuse me, go ahead. <laughs> Do you have an estimated uh, opening date? Um, I'm still working with the landlord um, as far as when he's going to be available, but I'm thinking around December 1st. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee, Gu Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Motion passes. Welcome, and the gentleman in the blue shirt in the back is—he'll uh, work with you to get a ribbon cutting. So, Thank you congratulations. Very much. Thank you. Thank all. you. New business D: Citywide Home Health and Home Care Office, 210 North Cass Avenue, Units A and B. Board to consider ordinance approving request from Citywide Home Health and Home Care Services, Incorporated. Regarding the property at 210 North Cass Avenue, units A and B for the following. One, a special use permit for the office located on the ground floor in the B1 Limited Business District, and two, a B1 development permit. Director Sylvester. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Trustees, uh, this is the second business that's hoping to move into our downtown, uh, like the one that was just before you. This one also needs a B1 permit, like any business. Uh, the, the reason this one's slightly different is it's a proposed office use that's more than a thousand square feet and the zoning rules state that in the downtown any offices of more than a thousand square feet also need a special use permit. So these applicants went through the process with the Planning and Zoning Commission, there was a public hearing, there was a recommendation from Planning and Zoning, recommend, the recommendation was to approve the required special use permit. So those are the two items you're voting on tonight, the special use permit and then also the B1 permit. Um, the applicants are here if you guys want to come up and they can talk a little bit about their business. So introduce yourselves. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Chov and this is my wife, Tani Castillo. Good evening. Uh, we're both nurse, nurses and we own citywide home health and home care services. We do private care duty. Uh, we send caregivers to patients. That's the home care part. And we do have the health care part, which is uh, it's two different entities. Uh, that will be um, in this building or in this unit. So one is a healthcare services. We are IDPH um, licensed organization. We send nurses, physical therapy, speech therapist, occupational therapist at the patient's house. So none of the rest, none of the patient goes to the to the building. We do send the services to their house. Okay, motion to approve. Motion to approve, Barker. Second, Guzzo. Motion been made and second. Any comments? Anybody? Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Parker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Motion passes. Again, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Nice to be back to Westmont. <laughs> <laughs> New business E. Fritz Worley Park Consolidation, 490 North Warwick Avenue. Or to consider ordinance approving requests from the Westmont Park District regarding the property located at 490 North Warwick Avenue, which is known as Fritz Worley Park, for the following. One, preliminary and final plat of subdivision to consolidate five lots in the one in the R3 single family detached residence district, and two, Westmont Land Development Ordinance variance for relief from both the installation and cash in lieu contribution of required land improvements. And I'd ask Director Sylvester to give us some additional information. Mr. Mayor and Trustees, I'll give a very quick overview, but uh, Manager May, if you don't mind, you, I think, have a more thorough knowledge of some of the history that led up to the requests that are in front of you tonight. In a nutshell, the Park District has acquired some additional property adjacent to Fritz Worley Park. 
and they're going to expand the park and as a part of that process they're consolidating all of the little pieces into one larger property so that's why it's a plat of consolidation and the request that you're being asked to vote on is to approve the, the mushing together and the merging of all of those different little pieces into one large property so that's a plat of consolidation the second part is interesting Platting is the process where land, lot lines get created. It's usually done when development happens. And when development happens, it's usually a developer who's taking raw land and, and splitting it up for home sites. And then we require sidewalks and street lights and parkway trees and stuff like that. So the ordinances say that whenever we approve a plat, the developer also has to provide public improvements, like the, the kind I just listed. That's not the case here but we still need to um, cross that T and dot that I and say that this developer, in this instance the park district, is exempt from having to provide those public improvements even though they're getting approval for a plat. So we're not saying that the park district has to put in sidewalks and parkway trees and street lights and stuff like that. That's the second item that you're being voted on or that you're being asked to vote on. Uh, there is a representative here from the park district, uh, Joel Hyman who wants to give a little more detail. And again, if there's some history that, Steve, you think would be appropriate to explain, I think you know more, a lot more than I do. Very quickly, as part of the stormwater management program, the village acquired five parcels on that 400 block, two of them on the east side of the street and three on the west side of the street. The three on the west side of the street were separated from Fritz Worley Park by a single family home of which the park since acquired. So this, uh, all five of the parcels I refer to were transferred to the park district ownership as part of a previous agreement. And so the five properties on the west side of the street are being consolidated into one facility, park land. Okay. That was the intent from day one. Joel? Yes, thank you. Uh, Joel Hyman from the park district. Uh, Mayor, board, want to thank you for the consideration. Uh, been summed up for you pretty well. Uh, just want to thank the village board for the conveyance of those properties. Uh, through the conveyance, this helped us get an IDNR grant to improve that property uh, plan to follow. But uh, wanted to come before the board and uh, say that the goal is to basically clean up and uh, consolidate all those properties. And thank you for your consideration. Another question. I see you have a uh, tennis court there. Have you ever thought about converting it to pickleball? Because pickleball is getting very popular now. Absolutely. The, I'm not too sure, I mean, the, the dimensions, but can that be done there? Absolutely. The plan, uh, being that this is successful, would be to submit another DNR grant and add additional pickleball courts, which we have had a lot of feedback and requests yeah, thank for. Thank you. And again, in order to apply for the grant, these consolidation needs to occur. So it's important for the park. And this was the intent all along when we bought the property. Um, do I have a motion to approve the, the preliminary plat Brady, and the land motion. development? Brady, second. Second. Motion well, remains second. Any additional comments? Mayor, do you remember when this all started, the consolidation? 2015? Or? Well, the, the acquisition, the... Yeah. Uh, Right in the middle. 2014, I believe. 2014, and that's when we were collecting properties. The, the village did, did construct a stormwater management facility on both sides of the street in uh, low-lying floodplain areas uh, anyway. And uh, we had those properties all along. It was the opportunity um, with the other acquisition. And then this actually ties into a three-party agreement or three two-party agreements with the park district and then the natatorium, right. uh, it's all that's all the history yeah, behind it's, this. It's nice. It's nice to see this come together, and then it's a party. You know that cooperation between the the park district and uh, the village and making these things work out. And, uh, sometimes you get awards for those things. Again, this area was probably the number one priority as far as stormwater committee, as far as the. Uh, I remember damage. the canoes. It was first 2013. Yeah, and. The park is going to make it as usable as it can, given that it is a detention basin. So it's all a win-win for the community. Uh, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, look forward to the development. Uh, 
New business F, increase in available class four liquor license. Um, board to consider an ordinance increasing the number of available class four liquor license by one for Greek Food Incorporated, DBA Taste Greek Street Food at 645 North Cass Avenue. And um, my deputy liquor commissioner is ill this evening, so I will uh, handle this. George and Gina Drovolos will be, they're here. Uh, back in 2020, they surrendered their liquor license due to lack of business because of COVID-19. Um, we have had no problems uh, and just didn't renew voluntarily for financial reasons. Uh, they, are, they have no problem with the liquor serving. Uh, also, one previous owner is off the license, but two new owners are being added. They were good when they previously had their license, and we've done a background check on all the owners revealed they are eligible to receive a license. Um, there has been no issues, and, and again, we recommend that they um, receive a uh, new license and we increase the available class four by one. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve, Little. Second. Motion been made and second to increase the class four liquor license comments. I don't know if the petitioner wants to, you don't have to. If we vote no, you may want to, but no. Uh, I think <laughs> it's. Yeah. All right. Um, I ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. The license <coughs> been approved. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll move on to G, temporary class for liquor license. Board to consider ordinance approving the liquor commissioner's issuance of a temporary class for a liquor license for the Sushi House LTD 830 East Ogden Avenue in um, Westmont. Um, we were notified last week of a change in ownership of over 20% of which requires a new license by our ordinance. Uh, they added a new owner. Their state liquor license expired on October 31st. So they need a temporary license so they can renew their state license and give us time to complete a background review of the new owner. Uh, granted, it is disappointing they did not tell us ahead of time, but I don't see a problem with this, and Tom does not either. Um, we are currently doing the same thing with Suburbanite Bowl. And they're with their liquor license. So uh, we recommend approval, and I look for a motion to approve the temporary license. Motion to approve, Barker. Second. Second. Motion to remain second. Any additional comments? I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Barker. Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Nero. It's, I'm sorry, it's absent. Yeah. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. New business H, amendments to tobacco and alcohol penalties. <laughs> Board of Consent Ordinance amending Chapter 22, Article 13, Division 5 of the Westmont Code of Ordinances regarding penalties for tobacco violations and amending Chapter 10, Article 5 of the Westmont Code of Ordinances regarding penalties for alcohol violations. And I'm going to ask the um, Attorney Zeminak to give some additional information on this. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this initiative comes from the Mayor as the, both the Tobacco Commissioner and the Liquor Commissioner and uh, the Deputy Tobacco and Liquor Commissioner, Tom Mulhern, uh, to have a more um, uniform fine structure for when people have violations uh, related to their tobacco license or their liquor license. And if you looked at the draft ordinance, you'll see there's a fixed fine for a first violation, a second violation, third violation, et cetera. This provides uh, good advance notice to licensees what they're in store for, and it allows for the uniform imposition of fines and other penalties by the Tobacco and Liquor Commissioner. And then there's just a couple other miscellaneous cleanup amendments that are indicated in your draft ordinance related to this. Maybe in our... Um attorney for the violations also has reviewed and recommends it and this is consistent with um, having a um, 
standard penalty based on the number of violations. So I recommend approval. Um, do I have a motion to, to approve the ordinance? Motion to approve Guzzo. Brady second. Motion to remain second. Any comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, new business I, engineering agreement, phase one engineering for Oakmont outfall. Board to consider ordinance authorizing an engineering agreement with Premia engineering for phase one investigation and concept preliminary design for the outfall moving east to the di discharge point in the detention basin along Route 83. Manager May. So this is, uh, although titled Oak Mount Outfall, it, it technically is, but uh, I don't know if it was the, maybe two public works committees ago, there was a, a request by the uh, Oakwood Homeowners Association uh, regarding the, uh, an issue they're having with the, the outfall of their detention basin uh, that they call Lake Charles and uh, the, the outlet pipe for that and how it runs between homes in a very uh, unusual way. The whole eastern frontage of this basin uh, and even the overland flow route goes directly into the industrial, into the office park to the east. And this engineering services agreement is to look for uh, a better route, a better place for the storm sewer outlet to be. And uh, right now the outlet is a, you know, a private amenity for the, the subdivision and the association and by putting this in here and then <clears throat> to be determined through easements or whatever, but it's all trying to head to the Pasconelli properties, the um, detention basins that exist uh, along Pasconelli and it's called Brownswood Creek, but the it's all heading to the same place where it crosses underneath Route 83. We're just looking for a more efficient way uh, to take it that way and, and eliminate this nuisance burden pipe. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Little. Second, Barker. Motion been made and second. Additional comments or questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Motion passes. New business J, engineering agreement, phase one and phase two, design engineering for Traby Avenue roadway and stormwater improvements. Board to consider ordinance authorizing an engineering agreement with Primera Engineering for phase one and phase two, design engineering for Traby Avenue roadway and stormwater improvements. Uh, Manager May. Mayor and Board, this project is uh, kind of a, a culmination of uh, a, a stormwater management need in, in that region. We have uh, detention and, and stormwater facilities in and around the police department, uh, the library. We've uh, recently, uh, recently in the scheme of things, uh, have acquired certain properties to do improvements in and around there and on North Grant Street. But the storm sewer system is very, um, shallow so it limits our ability to service that area uh, which is why it is you know today so this project this engineering and it's phase one and phase two so phase two would be actually putting together construction plans and services is to run a storm sewer all the way down to uh, park street keeping it as uh, you know deep as possible and making the most available access uh, to that and it there's also issues at washington by the miller school there it just it it hits a lot of points that we can uh, solve together with this. So hope for your approval. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Guzzo. Second, Little. Motion remains second. It, any questions, comments? No one, roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Motion passes, new business. K, engineering agreement. Grade separated pedestrian crossing alternatives anal, anal, analyze study analysis study or to consider an ordinance authorizing an engineering agreement with T Y Lynn for a grade separated pedestrian crossing alternative 
and analysis for the Metra train station in downtown Westman. Manager May. Uh, this is something that uh, we also covered at Public Works Committee, so I'll start with the short version and you know, please ask if you want anything uh, expanded, but the, our, our improvements in and around uh, the depot and the train station, besides the Addington Plaza and the, and the West Quincy Street work that we already have in progress, the, uh, we've been working with Metra for it's, it's a few years now about doing a complete platform reconstruction uh, uh, along the depot. And then as um, this project has grown into not just platform reconstruction, but it affects improvements inside the depot as well. There was a change with ticket agent and you know going to electronic and there's no longer a person in there. And the whole inside of the building uh, that is village owned, but on BNSF right away, is um, all being done interior to all at Metra's uh, you know expense and through that grant. Our as part of its, but that's Metra who operates the service on the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad property. BNSF is requiring that the pedestrian crosswalk that connects the two depot buildings, which is a 100 feet or so west of the Cass Avenue, uh, be removed and not replaced, uh, which we don't find acceptable, but it's there right away and they, you know, do what they want. So that is a requirement of the project. So this engineering agreement is to look for alternatives uh, to that, whether it's an overpass, an underpass, or uh, at a different location that might be uh, acceptable to BNSF, and then hopefully build it into that uh, project. I, I think they can be constructed at the same time, but I, uh, you know, we went, we need to get started on the alternatives. That's why this is a, an analysis study uh, to see where those opportunities are, and we have to initiate that and the rest of this you know we have no cost uh, you know in it I have a motion to approve the engineering agreement motion to approve Barker second <laughs> motion to made in second uh, comments Eric. trustee Barker if the analysis would tell us that none of these are good options we like we feel it's necessary that we have this Correct. That's why we're yeah. doing the analysis. So we're hoping that we get either the same location or a better location. So we've had, uh, and, and I should have mentioned that T.Y. Lynn is the design engineer for Metra doing the platform repairs, but the, this engineering is not part of the scope <clears throat> of services for Metra. So we're using them. We, we already have uh, three opportunity locations that they'll be looking at. So it, it, it can be you know, there can be several usable alternatives. That doesn't mean they're affordable, but um, whatever it is and whatever we feel is the best fit and then try and uh, get additional funding to accommodate that. Right, but as a staff, we feel it's critical that we have it. I, I would think so, and that was the opinion of the Public Works Committee last time we talked about it. Okay. Again, one option might be a walk over the tracks. Could be. Three locations over. Same locations under, Got it. obviously, different yeah. expense with that, yeah. but, yeah. yeah. Any other comments? Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Stamanovich. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Motion passes. New business L. Award of bid proposal. Pasconelli Lighting Project. Board to consider ordinance awarding the bid proposal yep. from the Utility Dynamics Corporation for the base bid and alternate number one. Pasconelli Lighting Improvements and authorizing a contract consistent with the bid documents. Manager May. So this is a uh, long awaited, long asked about. Uh, problem that we're dealing with the entire length of Pasconelli Drive has had a, a variety multiple issues with the, the circuitry and the streetlight equipment uh, on North Pasconelli the, the you know the repairs have all been you know temporary and uh, external and things draped all over the place just to keep the, the lights on and there's still uh, sections that do not have it this project um, that we also talked about before, but we went out to bid, and it's to replace, uh, well, we have a mixture of concrete poles and metal poles out there, 
So this will replace all of the uh, equipment with our, our current standard, put that in there, replace all the controllers and all the underground circuitry. So we're essentially reconstructing the streetlight network on Pasconelli and Oakmont. What it doesn't have, and not that we forgot about it, but as long as we've been trying to get this going, this is how we went out to bid. And these are very favorable prices. They're um, significantly less than we were you know, being quoted approaching it as a maintenance project. But we're still looking um, as another alternative. The, the bid is being awarded on the base bid to do that, but then uh, you know, if there are any dark sky opportunities to do that, uh, we're still, that'll be a, a, you know, a, a step for like a change order and we're continuing the shopping those, uh, those features now. But that's, I'm just saying it's not included in here, but we're still moving towards that. That's all through public works. That. That's all through Public Works. Through Public Works, through the contractors to do the bigger thing, and then we'll be looking at that. And mostly, you have a pole, you have an, an arm, which have different styles, and then the actual fixture is where we have all these opportunities to use anything before right. we order them. Right, I, and I, 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 as the chairman of the EIC, I appreciate all of that. And then the other, the other part of that, where the light goes is critical, obviously, but then. How long does the light need to go there? And you know the conversations are: Do we need to light the street 100% completely all through the night if there's no road traffic up there or whatever? But take, you know, and the answer is from the EIC is take advantage of the technology to make these improvements. And I appreciate all that. Um, and that technology will be in the new controllers. But you know, so there's timer or right. or different. Um, Intensities at different times of night or off, you know, at some point. Have you, I don't know if you've, I know you've driven down there often at night, but it's, you know, where we have a lot of the outages, I would even say there's a lot of light off the adjacent properties. I, I don't know if the, the problem is that the lights are off or that you can see that the lights are off that makes it disturbing, but uh, you know, I don't find it. I was thinking about just turning them all off and putting up a sign saying intentional. You know, just to see how that uh, how that was, and um, but anyway, the to your point, we're, we're yeah. working towards all that. It's great, greatly appreciated, and you know, and, and the committee will say it over and over again. As a society or a world, we tend to overlight everything because it's cheaper and they stay out longer and all of that. But uh, the proof of the LED is that the the more you install, you just because they last longer and they're cheaper to operate, we just, as a society, we just put them more because we can. You know, but uh, we appreciate all those uh, interest in looking out for those recommendations. What I'm looking for is um, a motion to award the bid proposal for phase one and the total to include, uh, to alternate number one, to include a total of 432,338 to uh, Utility Dynamics Corporation. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Bernie. Little. Second. Second. Um, comments. Comments. Got yes. A, I got a question. Are all the metal poles going to be replaced or just the older types? Just the. Concrete poles will be replaced with new equipment. The metal poles that are out there can remain. It's the same standard. They're all good. Right. But then the, the fixtures uh, will all be uniform uh, when well, we're done. Okay. It's mostly a, a circuit, a wiring project than anything else. And they'll all be in the same locations they are now. Oh, so is this a local company that's in Illinois? or? It is. Um, you know, I'm not sure. There were bidders. I know there are many come out of Indiana. I will say that we have a, it's interesting that you ask, and maybe it's why you ask, but we have a, a, a company in one of the office uh, complexes on Pasconelli that deal in this equipment, and when the bid was out, they were asking um, to be considered as, um, you know, a, an acceptable alternate, you know, to our standard. So we are trying to use a local, biz, a local Westmont business uh, to do that as well thank you thank you any other seeing no other questions roll call please trustee little yes trustee brady yes trustee simonovich yes trustee barker yes trustee guzzo yes motion passes uh, we'll move on to new business m 
consultant contract downtown incentives. Board to consider ordinance approving a contract with Savoy Consulting Group, LLC, to evaluate the village's downtown incentive programs and to make recommendations. And I got Director Sylvester. Mr. Mayor and Trustees, I printed copies of the contract. I apologize. Um, we didn't finish it up in time to get it to you with the uh, agenda packets. And then I just realized sitting here five minutes ago that I printed the wrong ones. So I can <laughs> give these to you if you want to reference them during my very brief <coughs> presentation. But then I want to collect them up so I can print the right ones. So should I do that? You may. All right. I don't know if you're going to get them back, but you can pass them around. So real quickly, uh, we talked about this at the committee meeting earlier tonight. Uh, as you all know, the, vi the Village has had a grant program in the downtown for many years. During the pandemic, we put it on hold as a, a budget, uh, you know, cost-saving measure, and it's been on hold ever since. While it was on hold, staff talked about the efficacy, efficacy, the, how well it was working prior to the pandemic and if it needed to be tweaked or not. Uh, we've heard from several of you trustees that there's a, a great desire to focus on the downtown and come up with ways to improve and enhance our downtown. And we've recommended that we go with a consultant who specializes in downtown improvement programs, downtown incentive programs, et cetera. Some of you may remember Con Savoy, the consultant that we're recommending that we contract with. He's helped the village before, and we've got a contract with him tonight uh, for your uh, consideration. The item I would point out is the, the scope of work is basically to, to do this pretty quickly over the next three or four months, work with a focused team that we're going to call a working group that will consist of two people on, from the board appointed by the mayor, two members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and Larry Forsberg from the Chamber of Commerce, along with Joe Hennerfeind and myself from the Community Development Department, and then Khan is the lead person uh, moving the project forward. So that's the, the project. It's to look at other programs, other communities, how they've provided incentives for downtown property owners and downtown businesses. And the cost, as you'll see on page four, is about $27,000. Now, when, the, when you, the board, approved the budget back in May, you had allocated $80,000 for downtown studies. This is obviously well below that. Uh, as we discussed during the committee meeting, this is, I think, an important first step, looking at an incentive program, but it's not the final step. Uh, as Trustee Barker mentioned earlier, there is a desire and a need to come up with a plan for the downtown beyond just this incentive program, and not now, but I think at a later meeting we can talk about maybe utilizing some of the remaining funds that were budgeted and are not being accounted for here for the next step in this process. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Since I'm relatively new, you mentioned that um, Savoy has done consulting work for us before. Could you just elaborate for me? Sure. So I'm familiar with two. Uh, many <coughs> years ago before I was hired, he helped the village uh, create our TIF districts. Uh, that involves identifying an area and doing an analysis and then creating the TIF district to meet all of the requirements. And he helped the village do that, I think, in around 2013. And then more recently, in 2018, uh, the planner at the time, Joe Hennerfein, uh, took another job, and there was some staff turnover, so the village hired Khan on an interim basis to act as the planner for the village, basically, until new staff could be hired. So about four years ago, he helped with day-to-day -day activities in the department as a consultant planner. So he's well-known, yes. done work for us. Um, I need a motion to approve that contract. Motion to approve, Little. Second, Guzzo. Motion made, second. Additional comments? Seeing on roll call, please. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Motion passes. We'll move on to N, new business, and building and fire code adoption. Board to consider ordinance adopting the ICC 2021 model codes with local amendments and approving related codes and amendments. And I'm gonna turn this over to Director Sylvester. 
Uh, Mr. Mayor and, and trustees, I'll give a very brief overview of this project, uh, less so for your benefit because we went through this during the committee meeting earlier tonight, and more so for the benefit of anyone that may be watching this at home tonight on television. Uh, every community uh, adopts building codes, requirements for the construction of new buildings. Most communities rely on a, a group called the International Code Council that creates model codes and that group produces updated versions of the model codes every three years. It's very typical for a community to adopt those model codes and then use them for six, nine, 12 years, but eventually it's good practice for a community to adopt a newer, more recent version of those model codes. So the Village of Westmont uh, has been using the codes that came out 2012 uh, or 2011. 2011, so we've been using them for about a decade. There's a newer version that just came out in uh, 2021, and we're recommending that the village adopt that version, the most recent version of those model codes, again, from the International Code Council group. The only other wrinkle to this is in addition to adopting those model codes, which cover everything that has to do with constructing buildings, Communities also have the option of adding additional requirements called local amendments. Over the years, Westmont, like many communities, has adopted local amendments. I have to give a shout out to Chief Riley and his staff, Neil, who's here, for working very uh, closely with the building commissioner, Jason Vitell, to analyze all of those local amendments that have been adopted over the years, uh, decide which ones uh, we want to keep and which ones are no longer needed. There was agreement on all of that, and I want to emphasize this. There was 99% agreement on everything, what to get rid of, what was outdated, what was no longer necessary. The one item where there was some disagreement, uh, the community development department was coming at it from a more development-friendly perspective, and the fire department very appropriately was coming at it from a, a life safety perspective, uh, was the one we discussed earlier tonight. Right. And I don't mean to steal your thunder, Mr. Mayor, but, uh, the recommendation uh, before the committee meeting tonight was to adopt the new model codes, the overall codes, and eliminate the one local amendment where there was some disagreement. But based on the discussions from earlier tonight, the recommendation now is to adopt the model codes and keep that one local amendment, but then have further discussion about that one local amendment at the Public Works Committee meeting in a couple of weeks. Uh, which we're all very safety comfortable with. Yeah. Public, safety, Public Safety Committee. December 1st. <laughs> Again, the motion would be to approve the building code 2021 and leave the, amend, the local amendment in. Right, yes. correct. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve Guzzo second. as amended. As amended. Second. Second. second model. Any additional comments? Roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Simonovich? Yes. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And that committee meeting is right now tentatively scheduled for December 1st. At 4.30 here. New Business O, Amendment to Agreement with Fire Recovery, USA Incorporated. Board to consider ordinance approving an amendment to the agreement with Fire Recovery, USA Incorporated for increased fees for specialized fire emergency responses. Chief Riley. Thank you, Mayor. As you may aware, the village approved an agreement with Fire Recovery, USA back in 2016, which allowed the fire department to use their services for specialized fire emergency responses such as car extrications, hazardous materials, spills, and water rescues. This amendment increases the fees for such services which are passed through fees to the recipient of the services. These fees have not increased since 2016. I want to thank the village attorney for helping with this, and these fees are codified into the amendments to the International Fire Code. Nope, that's all I was going to add on that the, the codes Code amendments that you just adopted include these new fees. Thank you. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve, Guzzo. Second. second. Motion to made and second. Any additional comments? Seeing them roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Nero is absent. I keep seeing his name. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Motion passes. New business P. Surplus property, Westmont Fire Department, 
board to consider an ordinance declaring the attached inventory list from the Westmont Fire Department of outdated unusable equipment as surplus property. Chief Riley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, these uh, four items in front of you are from the old communications vehicle that was sold. Uh, these are uh, cameras that are no longer usable, and one's a Polaroid, so that's telling you how far it's going back. So <laughs> it's yeah, time to move again, on to the new thing. technology. Do I have a motion to declare the, motion the four items little. surplus? Motion made by Little. Second Guzzo. Second Guzzo. Any other? This is a standard procedure we have to do when we declare any equipment. Uh, I'd ask for roll call, please. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Simonovich. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee L Guzzo. Yes. I'm sorry, Marie. No, that's Motion okay. passes. I do have to say, after this last one, I am gone in executive session, but um, new business queue, termination of agreements and ordinances for 1 North Cass Avenue. Board to consider an ordinance terminating the following agreements with Westmont Apartments, LLC, and repealing the following ordinances for proposed development of 1 North Cass Avenue and surrounding properties. One, termination of economic development agreement. Two, termination of real estate sales and purchase agreement. Three, termination of development agreement. Four, repeal of ordinance number 2021-46, an ordinance approving an economic development agreement. Five, repeal an ordinance number 20. 21-47, an ordinance authorizing a real estate sales and purchase agreement. Six, repeal of ordinance number 20-21-48, an ordinance approving the vacation of certain public right-of-way. Seven, repeal of ordinance number 20-21-49, an ordinance approving a site plan, landscaping plan, preliminary plata subdivision, zoning map amendment, special use permits, variances in a development agreement. And eight, repeal of ordinance number 2022-40, an ordinance approving a final plat of subdivision. I'd ask the board to uh, make a motion to approve this as a block, unless somebody wants one removed. Yeah, motion. motion. Motion to approve as a block. Is there a second? Second, Brady. Okay. Comments, anybody from the public? This is the time. Um, I'm John Haroldson, um, president of Haroldson Holdings, which owns 21 East Burlington. Um, this whole process has been arduous for all involved. Um, after a long conversation with the developer, Rich Gammonley, He's he's under the he he's under the assumption he can get it done by the end of the year, um, meaning he can he can close by the end of the year with the village, and with myself and with the landowner next door and the house across the street. That being said, this the like I said the the process has been just absolutely arduous. But and it, it, the blame is on both sides, neither side. COVID, whatever you want to blame it on, it doesn't matter. The, the point is, everybody's got the same goal. Get the building built, right? Get, get it occupied, get it done. Um, the fastest route to that, in my opinion, after being involved in this all along and everybody's got a different amount of involvement in it and nobody's got all of it, Richard's the, the, has got the best chance to get it done in, in the shortest amount of time. If if this if you vote to repeal all these ordinances, we're back to we're we're going to be set back two years. By the time we, we a we find another developer to do it, b they do their due diligence and then go through the whole process again, it sets us back. Richard is asking, and I'm not going to go into the what <clears throat> what other things he's asking for or what he's proposing, but. He's asking to delay this for the end of the year. He thinks he can get it done. In my opinion, it's worth waiting another 60 days for him to do it rather than stopping it now because now we're, we know we're back at square one. We've been with this, this process has been going on for five years. Um, nobody wants to get it done more than I do, <laughs> trust me. But 
and, and, and I, I, I hesitate to recommend him, but when you look at what's going to have to happen if, you, if, if this happens, even if he can't come up with the financing, you know, if he, if he can come in with uh, an executed um, loan commitment after you've done this, it's still, it's still going to be a year and a half or at least a year, whereas he can keep moving forward, and he has kept moving forward, according to him, this whole time. <laughs> um, so I, I ask that you delay this, this to the, the vote on this until the end of the year. And then he's made assurances that there won't, he, won't, uh, oh, he won't impede the village and or me and or the other principals involved going forward if, if this is, you know, if you delay it to 60 days. Because otherwise, there's, now it becomes all finger pointing and it's, it's gonna delay everything even more because another developer is not gonna wanna come in and get involved if there's any chance of litigation. So as much as I hate to say it, I, and I'm the least patient of everybody here, we, we should wait another 60 days before we, before we vote on this. And, and I have no problem after, after that to say, okay, he's out, start over because obviously he couldn't perform. He's got a million excuses why he hasn't to this point, but he is very confident he will, he can perform by the end of the year. So. Thanks, John. I'd ask the attorney if you have anything to add. Um, yes. If you want to proceed with the vote tonight, um, you do have the option, if you, any of you feel like reconsidering it, uh, at the next meeting, you have the ability to reconsider that vote if, if the motion to terminate and, and repeal these ordinances is approved tonight. Um, we're going to executive session to talk in part about this threat of litigation, um, so you have an opportunity to talk about it uh, after your vote. And again, if anyone's, or if the majority uh, of the trustees' minds change, you can always revisit this vote at a next meeting. Again, the, the threat of litigation is something I don't even consider, you know, because if somebody wants a delay, but then they tell you they'll sue you. So, any other comments? Did we make a motion already? I think we did. We okay. made a motion to approve so as I, a block. Yes, Mayor. Yes. Thank you. I was just waiting my turn. Oh, you're waving your finger? Okay. <laughs> I'd so, ask for it. So, yeah. if I understand it, uh, the agreement with Harrelson's is uh, void. Um, I, I don't know what's happened recently, but as of last week, the village was informed uh, by Mr. Haroldson that the contract had expired and that Mr. the developer, which is Westmont Apartments LLC, was no longer under contract uh, for that property. <clears throat> right, and we know that to be true, right? We know that that was stated to us by the property owner, but I don't, we haven't reviewed the documents and okay. absolutely know it's true. Okay, and then the other one is the intent, I guess, for Haroldson's and your concerns are that uh, you'd like to sell your business in the end of this that's going to be sold, right? The property. Yes. yes. The, the Haroldson's property. Yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. And again, I, just real quick, um, there were several deadlines that were met. And then there was a re he needed to do a request at that point for an extension. It never was done. Now all of a sudden we've got it on the agenda. Now he, they're asking for the extension. So a lot of this has been uh, back and forth. Eric, so, yes, question. sir. What, wasn't the developer also going to purchase the uh, Hurlston garage? That's what. And also the uh, other mall. property next to it, the strip mall. Mm -hmm. I understand he backed out on that also. Uh, for what we've been told. So, I mean, yes, step I one and two, yeah, we're talking about the building itself now. I just, uh, I don't know why he backed out of there. No, no. Trustee Simonovich. Okay. Has the developer actually asked for the 60-day extension that Mr. Harrelson is talking about? Uh, yes, the attorney, we got an email uh, late this afternoon or mid-afternoon uh, where they saw that this was on the agenda and did request an extension until either December 31st or January 30th, I think his email says, and I can share that with you. 
but there's no one here representing the developer today. Oh. Trustee Little. How many extensions have we already granted this developer? Uh, technically none. It was just a very long process to get through the TIF incentives that were going to be provided to get through what the development will look like <clears throat> um, and get through the zoning approval process. And then we had some conflicting documents where one document required the developer to close 60 days after final plat approval. Final plat approval occurred on April 21st of this year. Um, but the real estate contract provided for a one year due diligence period to do things like physical investigation of the site, environmental testing, et cetera. That expired on September 30th and that triggered his obligation once that period expired to close. So we set a closing date. Again, in the contract, he had the right to ask for an extension, and we had to grant it uh, to 30 days, but it wasn't done. And, um, and we don't even know if a lot of those testing were accomplished. So they were supposed to be done before closing. So there's a lot of different, and we can always, if we vote uh, to uh, terminate, like the attorney said, we can always add it back on if, if in fact, there's some things we, we see, but um, any other comments? I, did he, no. I'd ask for roll call, please. Trustee Little? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Simonovich? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Motion passes uh, miscellaneous. Anybody got any miscellaneous? Seeing none, I do have a uh, need to adjourn to an executive session um, to discuss matters so permitted. And it's one, the purchase of property for the use of the village pursuant to section 2C5 of the Open Meetings Act. Three, setting the price for the sale of real estate owned by the village pursuant to section 2C6 of the Open Meetings Act. And four, potential litigation involving Westmont Apartments LLC pursuant to section 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. I need a motion for those three reasons to go in executive session. Motion to adjourn for executive session for purposes stated. Second, Guzzo. Motion been made and second to go in executive session. Um, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Zamanovich. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Brady. Again, after the executive session, we do not have any further business, and this meeting will be adjourned. So at this point, we're going to go into executive session. Thank you.